Hey, what's up everyone? Vegetarian Zombie here, and I want to welcome you back to my latest Twi HTML for Twine Developers video series. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about the differences between inline content and block content. This sounds a little more complicated than it actually is, but it will have a profound effect on how you lay out your stories. Remember, at the end of the day, our stories are all going to be outputted into HTML. And you have to understand how that HTML is rendered. And that's why it's critically important to understand inline content and block content. Okay, so let's just dive right into it. Here we have an HTML document. And in the last video, I went over the process of setting this up. This is the doc type that is included in every HTML document. And again, you won't use this when working with Twine. This, the HTML tag, starts our HTML. And you can see I then tab over to align my all my tags so I can see them visually to understand the order. Typically, white space does not matter in an HTML document. Here we have our header tag, and this is where we keep all the meta information about our HTML file, such as things we may want to share on social media sites that will become populated and so forth. And then we have the body tag, and this is where we're going to put all of our HTML content. I'm going to create a sentence, and we'll just say this space for rent. And now I'm going to create some text formatting. First, I'm going to use the B tag. The B tag bolds. So we can say this space bold. And then we're going to, going to use the I tag. And this is for italics. We're going to italicize for. And now I'm going to use the S tag. And the S tag will provide a strike through for this bit of content here. Now I'll save this. Can you guess what this will look like? Let's open this up in the browser. I already have this already queued up. Here, this is the page I'm working on. I'm just going to refresh it. And here we have this space, and this is italicized for rent. And you can see that this is bolded, this is italicized, and this has a line through it. This is an example of inline content, meaning th these tags are will be inside the line. They're not going to cause breaks or anything like that. They're styled along with the rest of the text. Okay, that's pretty obvious, uh, and it should work exactly as you expected, expected it to. If it didn't, then obviously something would have been wrong. Okay, let's see an example of block content. Here, I'm going to put a P tag before this. P stands for paragraph. Here we're indicating we'd like to start a paragraph, and this is the content that's contained within it. I can do it like this, too and this will be the same thing as doing this on one line. And this, again, may be easier for you to see. Let's do another paragraph. We'll say another space for rent. Now, before I run this in the browser, can you visualize what this would look like? OK, you got it in your mind's eye? Let's switch back. Now, I'm going to refresh. And here you can see we now have some spacing, this drop down some, and this drop down some as well. This is an example of block content. We are taking content and we're storing it within a paragraph tag. And when that paragraph's done, the browser provides a new line for us. Anytime you add block content, you're going to have that break. Let's see an example of this. I'm going to go return back to another space for rent. And here, let's add another paragraph inside of this paragraph. What do you think is going to happen here? I'll save this, and let's go back. Here you can see another, then this breaks, and now we have another block right here, space, and then we have another block for the rent. So now we have three paragraphs indicating three blocks. Whenever you create blocks, they're always going to be underneath the previous block. There's going to be times when you're going to want to content put your content within blocks and then arrange them in columns. You can't do this in HTML. You have to use CSS to do that, and we'll cover that in another video, video series. But for now, just get an understanding of what block content versus inline content all your tags are broken down into inline and block content, and you can really get an idea of what these are 
by going into MDN, which is the Mozilla Developer Network. I've actually had these pages all set up for us here, and I'll put the links down in the show description. But here you can see it talks about block level elements. And then if you go to this page, it'll give you some examples. And then you scroll down and you'll see all the various elements that you have available to use. And these are all block level elements. The same goes for inline elements as well. And you can come down here and check this out. It's not as extensive as the previous page. But there is a reason for this, is that currently in HTML5, it's trying to do away with the idea of block versus inline content and going into the idea of content categories. This is a little beyond what we're trying to do with when we're working with Twine, because here's the thing. When you're organizing, when you're creating a web page, you're organizing your content in a semantic manner so that what so that your content can be easily identified and broken down. In Twine, we're trying to tell stories and Organizing our content in a semantic manner doesn't really necessarily make sense. Rather, we're trying to focus on trying to, we're trying to focus on our stories and present them in a visual and pleasing manner. But it's still important for you to understand these things. There's going to be times where you're going to be adding tags to your game, and you're going to want to be organizing those tags to present that information in a visual way. And if you don't know the difference between inline and block level content, you'll start styling these things to try to massage them in the correct place. But what, what you'll actually be doing is wrestling with the HTML parser. The a HTML will be trying to correctly display your content while you are simply making tweaks and configurations that may not actually work and may actually bust in other browsers simply because you didn't really understand that the content was inline and you were trying to make it behave more like a block. Also, when you're working with CSS, there are times when you're going to want to change how a tag how a tag is presented, meaning you will sometimes make an inline tag act like a block tag or you'll make a block tag add act like an inline tag. And by knowing this, you'll be no you'll know how to make these changes and what these attributes actually mean in CSS. As you dive deeper into HTML, these things will become apparent and you'll be able to understand the differences, the core differences between block and inline content. So it's really important for you to know the differences between inline and block level content so you're not spinning your wheels trying to make the HTML work and behave in a way that it wasn't designed to do.